What's up guys, welcome back. Wanted to talk today about fly tying and kind of why I love it, how I got sucked into it, and then I'm gonna help you tie a badass redfish fly. So firstly, this is something that's gonna save you a lot of money if you do it the right way and use all the fibers that you buy. Two, you can make flies for exactly the area that you're fishing. If you're fishing oysters, your flies are gonna be different than if you're fishing grass. If you're fishing mud flats, your flies are gonna be different than if you're fishing current or you know some, t some sort of deeper situation. You need to kind of understand the flies to even advance yourself in the kind of realm of saltwater fly fishing. If you know the sink rates, if you know kind of the weedless setups, if you know the size hooks you need, then you're gonna be more in tune with the fish you're catching and it's gonna help you understand fish behavior and how these flies hone in and really how you can hone in with anything, not flies, just lures, whatever. So firstly, this is gonna save you money. Um, rather than buying $10 flies every time, which don't get me wrong, I love going to Fin the Feather or Hadrolls and you know, picking up some, some flies that are already made. I do appreciate labor, uh, Southern style flies, Ties Awesome Ones, Cape Romaine flies, Lighthouse, Lish Lighthouse um, all you guys, Ty Awesome, we love getting your patterns. But it pays for just your average uh, fly fisherman to, you know, understand this part of fly fishing. It helps you understand the fish. You're not just, you know, tying these random things on. You're doing this flash for a reason, to catch attention. You're doing the black because it's a good outline. You're doing the eyes because this is just something that fish recognize, is the eye. Um, like Fly Fishing Menco are now doing the uh, really uh, true realistic eyes. I think those are badass. Can't wait to get myself a set of those. But it just pays to add this in to your fly fishing adventure. Not to mention that catching a fish on a fly that you tied just makes it that much sweeter. It's just that much more thought that went into this specific fish. But, huh, we're gonna get into it. Um, I'm gonna kind of explain everything when we get on the stand, which is right here, I just need to fix the camera. And yeah, let's dive in. itself and some materials let's talk about it firstly I like to have all my stuff organized a nice little tackle box it's literally palm size has all my bead weights all my uh, dumbbells all my hooks and a couple other things on the other side secondly stand I went through my first two years of fly fishing and fly tying with a very low quality stand I do recommend getting a decent one with a nice weight at the bottom. It helps just kind of make everything a lot easier. It helps the shake, helps everything. So just throwing that out there. If you can afford it, go for it. Secondly, let me get this to focus. These are the hooks we're gonna be using. This is a Gamakatsu jig hook, and I think it's a size two. And these are great because I've been fishing a lot of oysters, a lot of mud flats at low tide, and I really like how these flies are offset. As you can see, kind of like the, the eye of the hook is upturned, so it kind of offers that much more of a weedless setup. Let's get this a little bit more honed in. So let's just hop right in. Firstly, this little device is called a bobbin. You are definitely going to need this. This is an inexpensive one. I'm sure the expensive ones are nice, but this is what I use. 
I have the same quality whip finisher and it does the job just fine. And now we're just outlining the entire length of the hook and thread. And this helps everything stay on. Now, here's where you get to do a little choice of your own. Dumbbell eyes, whatever kind you want. Chartreuse, black, the white eyes, always great. Regular polished dumbbells. If you're using a crab or anything you don't want articulated eyes on, recommend using those. But we're gonna do Cloudster, so imitating minnows. So we're gonna do a set of black eyes. All right, right there. So. You can use any fibers you want. I like EP, it wicks water really well. This is black, just kind of really synthetic, almost plastic thread, cut off a little bit. Make sure all your threads are straight. It where you want it. I like going over the shank of the hook. One, two, three. And your thread should be on there. You should be able to pull that and it should not be going anywhere. For this specific fly, we're gonna take the head, wrap it around the weights, and back, give it another couple turns. Now you have the beginning of this Klauser jig. You can kind of adjust all these, make sure your fibers are going the right way. And that's just the first, just the first little start of this jig. So from there, shoot, let me grab some material. X is just something to catch fish's eye. I really like this rubber legs. They're in polished chrome white, they almost look like tentacles. I really like these, so I'm gonna add a couple of these in. It's a row of three, and I'm gonna reverse them so it'll be six off the back end. Make sure you're continuously kind of like peeling everything back like this way straightening everything as you tie. Keep everything linear. It's the way you're gonna be stripping the fly. Obviously, forward, going forward. So there we go, we got some flash, and we're gonna trim all this stuff up. But uh, it's good to just kinda of get it in there. You don't have to trim it too fast, but it's nice to have a, have a vision. After that, hmm, let's add some more. EP, we're getting low on this, but it'll do for this video. And how much you add and what profile you want through the water is completely up to you. That's where fly tying gets kind of liberating is um, whatever fish you're going for, if you're chasing a little bit bigger redfish, you can up the fly size by just upping the hook and adding a lot more fibers. That's a little too much. So I'm gonna add some feather flare after this too. So nice little bit, kind of hug, hug the hook. And then you can kind of wrap, keep it nice and loose, and then pull down, and make sure all your fibers are on. Then I'm gonna reverse this, because I want to poof on the bottom. I want it to be a little thicker. There we go. So it's looking a little bit more efficient. Hmm. I 
These are really nice. Really dainty feathers add a nice accent and the black and white or kind of like dark and light adds a really nice contrast to these flies. So let's trim it a little bit, give it like, okay. And we're gonna put one in each side. So one over here. And one on the other side. Like I said, your local fly shop should have all this stuff. There's nothing like crazy or rare. So another one, just like that. Try to keep them the same length. You want this fly to strip and flow smoothly through the water. Keep everything symmetrical. You don't want something kind of like when a twitch bait gets one of the trebles wrapped up, just going in circles through the water, a fly will be the same way. So look at that, you got two kind of, could be mistaken as claws, could be mistaken as fins, whatever you want, but this is just becoming a really nice pattern. Um, it's gonna produce. So we're gonna use the last couple EP fibers to cover everything up. Kind of blend everything together. Cause you want black to be the main color. You don't want to have like a lot of crazy colors. I mean, like the prom date is a is a great colorful fly. Really like works more for like really muddy water. And that's fine, but like we don't have Lake Moultrie or anything entering our waterways, so I don't really see a need for like super super bright colors. On this one, we're gonna spread it out and kind of do it over the entire length of the fly. Like I said, loose wrap it first, space it how you want it, and then get some quality wraps in. And then, like I said, kind of comb everything back, all these fibers to lay flat towards the back. One or two can be trimmed or whatever, but for the most part, smooth it out. beautiful slider but it also functions as a jig and it's also offset so it really kind of can like hop along the bottom really well through mud or oysters this is what I'm using for sure so lastly take your whip finisher tool and if you need a tutorial on whip finishing I'll make one of those or just look up one of the many get your line right and finish it small dab of adhesive on the top just to hold everything together. That's it. Nothing crazy. It's a low country jiggy clouser. So, if you like this video, subscribe, comment any flies that you want or that you'd like to see made. Again, experiment with colors, experiment with textures, different fibers. This EP is going to throw really well because it wicks so well, but regular craft fur does really well. Anything. You all have fun with it. Thanks for watching.